In this video, I'm going to be adding some wind and some solar to my greenhouse back here. And I'm going to be trying to heat it up using a little bit of a car heater and see what I can do with it. I learned a whole bunch. Uh, a lot of stuff people don't tell you uh, when they're talking about solar or wind energy. So if you want to jump straight to the summary or the wrap up, I uh, put the number right there and you can just skip all my build. Anyway, hope you enjoy it. Oh, hey there, everybody. I'm in my greenhouse here. It's the middle of January. We actually have a nice sunny day out. And a couple weeks ago, we had some really, really cold weather. It was in the lower 20s all day. No sun. It actually overwhelmed my heat sink here. Uh, temperatures inside here were below freezing. And my heat sink works really good. It keeps the uh, temperature in the greenhouse here usually uh, about 5 to 10 degrees above the ambient temperature. But I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to install solar and wind to power a battery and that is going to be powering a 12 volt car heater. This is a 12 volt 150 watt car heater I got off of Amazon and it's going to be in here, it's going to be on a timer and that way at night it's going to give some extra heat. It's going to give that 150 watts of heat blowing out and probably help my heat sink out, keep my temperature a little bit higher. It's going to help out the plants because the plants are going to think it's a lot warmer at night than it actually is. Uh, the heat sink, like I said, does a really good job. Uh, keeps the plants from freezing. But I'm going to do a little bit extra. Uh, I'm going to be putting in a solar panel back here. Uh, actually up on the roof. But it's right here in the box. And I have a wind generator here, one of the cheapest ones on Amazon. And see how it actually works. It only costs about 120 130 bucks, And bought a a really nice battery. It's a 100 amp hour battery. Uh, gel, not lithium. And all the other parts and pieces. I'm also going to throw in a couple lights up here. So let's get to it. So let's go over some of the parts and pieces that I got. First off, this is the 150 watt car heater here. Normally plugs into your cigarette lighter. And then Picked up a fuse panel, car fuse panel, from the auto parts store along with some fuses. And also, picked up some car lights. I'm going to put those in with a switch that I've already put together. That way I can have some extra light in here. For the battery, got a Mighty Max 100 amp hour battery. It actually has a little push button on the top so you can see the status of your battery have the cheap wind turbine here and then I picked up a hundred watt eco worthy solar panel and it also has a solar panel uh, solar panel uh, excuse me solar power controller for it very important and some extra wires. Also got a couple extra parts and pieces for the windmill. Pick these up at Lowe's. And some wiring. So with all those, I should be set to go. I'm going to put a link to everything down in the description. So the first thing I noticed with this is when this thing was cast it has a few sharp pieces on I got a sliver off of one of these. A uh, nice metal sliver I had to go and pull out. So be careful when you take this thing out and put it together. It does come with a mount. It does come with a mount here. Weld this onto a pole. I did something a little bit different for mine. For mine, in order to not have to weld anything, 
I went and picked up these galvanized uh, pieces here over at Lowe's. This is one and a quarter inch and it will fit just like that. Then once I have that there, put in this galvanized piece and we'll be all set. All right, let's put these blades on. It does come with a tool. About 28 and a quarter inches. So it goes in pretty good. It, when it seats in, all of them are at the uh, right uh, distance. Tighten this thing down. Now that I got the blades put on, I'm going to go ahead and uh, mount this thing, wire it up, and bring it back in. All right, I got it up. So I connected it to a 2x4 that I already have in the chicken coop. It's buried down. Have a couple carriage bolts. Hooked up the bottom carriage bolt. Tilted it down. And hooked up the windmill. And then lifted it back up using the carriage bolt for leverage. And got a second carriage bolt in here. Because this is a greenhouse, there's a lot of condensation that drips down from the roof here. Went ahead and just took a piece of really thin plywood, put a couple uh, two by fours underneath for support, and that should keep anything from dripping onto my electrical work here. Also put in the eco-worthy solar powered controller where I want it to go. And then I went and bought a battery tender brand 400 watt power inverter. Just thought it'd be sort of cool in case I need to uh, plug something in, maybe a grow light or something if I get really dark, uh, dark days or short days. Now one of the things I like about this Eco-Worthy kit is it comes with everything that you need to put together a solar kit, uh, put together your solar panels. It has your cords, comes with brackets, screws for the brackets, just everything you need. You can just it's almost plug and play, it's so simple. And uh, put the brackets on. Make sure you put your brackets on the outside. That way this end you can screw them straight down and you don't have to worry about having it be inside. Because that's a pain in the butt right here. Screw that in really quick. Yeah, this thing comes with a controller. Uh, the only thing the, the kit doesn't come with is a battery. So you have to decide whether you're going to use a marine battery or uh, lithium. They actually have some really good lithiums. I used a gel battery that I got from Lowe's though instead. Go ahead and put these other ones on. So I already have a pretty good angle on my roof. So I'm just going to use a 4x4 and then a piece of fencing there. And the fencing is going to uh, distribute the weight of the solar panel across it so that way my plastic roofing material in the greenhouse uh, doesn't crack and break. All right, well, got the solar panel up, changed my mind a little bit, put in an extra 4x4 in there, and that way it will uh, give me a little bit bigger angle. If I decide to uh, change it later on, maybe in the summertime, I can just pull out that 4x4 and bring it down. All right, got the solar panel plugged in, and at 0.1 amp, it's barely giving me a watt or two there at 14 point, uh, three volts but it is running of course it's overcast and it is operating properly 
can't wait to see what this thing does once we get some full sun all right getting some good sun not getting too much wind yet but let's check this thing out and see how the solar panel's doing all right so the battery's at 14.4 we're getting about an amp out of this thing about 1.1 amps so it's charging pretty good all right so on my water barrel uh, where the sun's hitting it it's getting up to about 52 53 degrees and where it's not looks like it's about 48 degrees I'm going to do another attempt to reading when it gets dark tonight uh, see if I've recovered from our really cold weather or not in my uh, water tanks rainwater collection saying about 50 degrees alright so using Watts law I'll be able to figure out how much uh, time I'll have on this thing so if we go 150 watts divide that by 12 volts equals 12.5 amps now if we have a hundred amp hour battery and we divide that by 12.5 we equal eight hours so we should have eight hours worth of uh, time on this heater at the max uh, I don't expect it to be eight hours. I'd be lucky if I get six, so we're going to find out. All right, well, it's around eight o'clock at night. Outside temperature is just below freezing at 30.2. Uh, greenhouse temperature is 38.1. Let's go outside for a second. All right, so I just kicked the heater on. And coming down here, I'm going to check my... Uh, temperature on the side of my barrels my barrels are right around 42 degrees and uh, they're starting to recover from our cold spell but the warmest that these barrels will get it in here is 42 degrees the heater is right around 80 degrees and that's just what the temperature of the uh, casing is. My battery's sitting at 12.5, uh, 12.5 volts. I'm going to leave this on overnight. See where my battery stands. See how much heat's uh, staying inside the greenhouse here. All right, this is pretty interesting. It's about 5:30 in the morning. And uh, the outside temperature actually went up last night, had a front move in, um, went to 35 degrees, but the greenhouse is still at 40 degrees, it's 40.5 degrees. So that means heaters, a uh, little space heater in there that's blowing heat is working good. Uh, normally the barrels, uh, when they dissipate their heat, they actually, uh, the temperature does drop in the greenhouse, but it's holding steady at 40 degrees. Let's go out and see what's uh, going on with the battery. All right, well, I let this thing go all night. Put the uh, microphone up to it. I don't know if you can hear it. It's still running. It's not putting out too much heat. I gunned it. And it's only putting out about 51.8. My battery... It's showing an E1 error, and it is showing 6 volts. See if I can get that a little bit better so you can see it. So when I shut off the, uh, when I shut off the heater, uh, the power left in the battery is 7.2 volts. That's not much. The car light, as you can see, I only have like a couple barely on on this thing. So yeah, I drained this battery all the way down last night. So I'm definitely going to have to use the timer and only kick it on from like midnight to four in the morning. 
All right, well, we had a full day of charge, or actually five hours of charge, because we had some fog this morning, and got up to about 11.6 volts. That's not a lot, but it did charge back the battery up. So just in case you were curious, tanks up to about 48 degrees. Uh, this one over here uh, at 50 and also this one uh, has some pretty good condensation on it. So hopefully we get another sunny day tomorrow we're supposed to and that'll bring the temperature of the tanks up. It'll also charge up my battery the rest of the way. So last night we got a little bit of wind. Wind turbine started spinning a little bit. Not enough for me to take any readings off of. But it was shaking. So I added a couple support wires. One there. And then put one right over there. So those, along with that piece of wood that's hooked onto this greenhouse, will keep it from going nuts and uh, shaking all over the place. All right, so for the wrap up, I have a 150 watt uh, car heater. I have that connected in through the fuse box up there and a timer. I have my solar controller, my wind controller. They're going to a 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. I put in an inverter just in case I want to use a, a fan or need extra USB chargers. Uh, the EcoWorthy solar controller has USB on it already. And I put in a light. So that way I have extra light in here. If I have to come out at night. Well, I have my 150 watt car space eater here. It works good. It does what it's supposed to do. It puts out 150 watts worth of heat. It doesn't go and just turn this whole greenhouse into a super warm tropical climate. It assists my heat sinks here in bringing the temperature up a couple more degrees and those couple more degrees keep your plants from freezing. The whole purpose of this greenhouse is to bring up the temperature uh, so my plants and my starts don't freeze in the spring before I get them to market. Up here 100 amp hour battery it works really good. I get about between six seven hours worth of power from this on here with a full charge. Problem is I'm in Washington State. We don't get a lot of sun. Right now it's foggy outside. So the fog is keeping the solar panel from working too good. Uh, I'm probably getting about one or two amps out of my uh, solar panel. If that, it's supposed to be a 100 watt, uh, 12 volt. And my wind turbine. Wind turbine uh, has to get wind. We've had two days of wind in the past three weeks not that great. I know in the springtime we get a lot more wind coming in from the south. It's going to turn that turbine. It's a cheap turbine. I wasn't going to spend four or five hundred dollars on a nice wind turbine for an area like this that doesn't have a lot of wind. That wind turbine cost me about 120 bucks. I did buy another solar panel that I'll be putting up later. Uh, the uh, battery tender brand 400 watt inverter just in case I need to power something like maybe an extra fan in here in the summertime. For the most part everything's working the way it's supposed to but it's not a miracle. Doesn't matter how much uh, uh, solar panel you have up there if you don't have the sun solar panels not going to do much for you. Uh, wind same thing no wind 
no power. But when this thing is charged all the way, I get extra heat or extra time on my little car heater here. What I'll probably do is, like I always do, keep a really close eye on the weather. Let the battery charge up all the way. And if we get a temperature that looks like it's going to be in the low 20s and my heat sinks are going to need an assist, then I'll flip it on. I'll have it uh, go up there with the uh, timer, uh, the DC timer, turn it on, and have it come on probably about midnight to 4 in the morning, uh, some of the coldest times, just to help out these heat sinks. Anyway, hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hey, give me a big thumbs up, push that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Happy gardening, and have a great day.